Welcome to the K-Files. Today we are investigating the musings of a cigarette smoking man. Welcome back to the Lush Basement Office. I'm your host, Katie. And I'm Crisalia, and we're coming at you from HollywoodRedux.com. HollywoodRedux.com. We're talking about the musings of a CSM today, one of my all-time favorites. Finally, finally we get to see CSM. No Mulder, (sighs) no Scully. (sighs) Finally, I'm so happy. CSM, JFK, Martin Luther King, Lee Harvey Oswald. I will say this. It was a little weird not to have Mulder and Scully in an episode. But I'm okay with that. Yeah, David and Jillian got the week off. <laughs> they needed a break from, like, how many seasons? <laughs> like, well, a lot. Four. Yeah. Three and a half, anyway. But yeah, no, uh, the uh, the cast uh, were pretty happy to have the time off. I know Duchovny especially was glad to be back in L.A. Taking some sun. Yeah, and it was Hopefully. nice to give William B. Davis a chance to shine, that tremendous C- actor who S- plays S- the CSM. Oh. Yeah. So it's happy. great stuff. It's it's uh, definitely a fun um, experience that we've never had before. We've never had an episode where we didn't have any Mulder and Scully, where we focused completely on an ancillary character. And there are a few more episodes of its ilk. There's a lo- there are a couple of lone gunman episodes where we don't really have much Mulder and Scully. And there are a couple of Skinners, which are always it's the Skin Man. Um, always a good time. So uh, there is like a small list of ancillary characters that get their own feature, but there aren't that many to get its own episode. Yeah. Especially CSM. I mean, a character who in every episode we just get him smoking a cigarette, and that's about it. That's all you know from him. Yeah. So Chris so Owens. Like, Chris Owens played the young version of him in this episode and in others. Demons coming up in the four, later on in the fourth season, he plays him again, and on and on and on, and uh, and then plays his son, of course, Jeffrey Spender later on. Um, so, but Chris Owens, uh, to get the cigarette smoking down, studied, actually studied William B. Davis's method, and he was, like, watching tell. him do it. And I think uh, Chris Carter or Frank Spotnitz, one of those guys, said to him, uh, uh, you know, like, you don't have to watch him so much. Just when, when Bill smokes, it's like sex. That's what they said. So, there you go. CSM. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Does it for love. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, really subtle stuff in this episode. It was actually written by Glenn Morgan, not written by Morgan and Wong, written by Glenn on his own steam. And directed by Wong this time. And directed by Mr. Wong. Is this Mr. his first Wong. episode that he actually like directed, directed on his own? Yeah, I, mean, I, th- I don't know how many episodes that uh, Wong directed all by himself. I don't know if, if, if any more than this one Definitely one, one of my favorites, though. It's really artfully directed. Of course, they work together in a beautiful way, these two artists. Um, and this is a different kind of dynamic that we saw where we had the words and then the story and, and it was, you know, um, brought to visuals. And they had to do a lot to, to bring that script to the, to the screen. They had to recreate the JFK assassination. The fact that TSM <laughs> had a lot to do with our history... Uh, makes me question how the hell he got into, like... Well, be careful now. So there's a throwaway line from Frohickey in, when you, when he's, uh, when CSM is surveilling the lone gunman, when Frohickey's telling the story, Frohickey says he got this out of a trashy mag, like, th- that, that, uh, this is not necessarily the true, true story of CGB, it's just one version of events and maybe there is some true stuff and uh and then maybe also you know Look, who man, knows it's the closest it's i'm gonna get to it so i'm gonna take it so <laughs> well it is interesting that we pin the you know this idea that um some uh you know cabal of uh shadow men have been driving the destiny of america and the free world since uh, a long time, but especially since the JFK assassination, mm-hmm. that was a big one, um, that we're pinning all of that on CSM. That CSM has come to embody was clean that idea. About it, like, snuck under. Oh, man, so good. I love, so I noticed for the first time watching this episode this round that the uh, it's very important that you pay attention to when CSM smokes and when he doesn't mm-hmm. because we find out the information that may or may not be true, that his mother died of lung cancer and his father was electrocuted. So his father was, you know, like burnt, basically. So there's a lot of like uh, burning and and things like this. And so and his mom died of lung cancer. So it's like a death, you know, cigarettes are death for him. And he doesn't smoke. He's a very serious guy. And then after the JFK assassination, when Lee Harvey Oswald gets nabbed in the theater, then he, he lights up for the first time. So then it's like he 
you know, he has become death. That's so insane. he's smoking because so he tells Lee, you know, I've, I'm reading studies; these can kill you. So now he's he's becoming death. Yeah, that so was then, thrown out the door once. <laughs> Once Lee was captured. Well, then later on, we see him in the early 90s when the X-Files have just opened and he's leading his little, uh, you know, backdoor dealings. And he's got the patch on. He's not smoking. He's he's writing. He's not smoking. He's trying to um, uh, not be the destroyer. He's trying to be the creator. And so he's not smoking. And then, of course, he gets the call. Oh, we have aliens. And Deep Throat, you know, takes him. And they have that whole um, really amazing conversation about how we are the shapers of you know, history and nobody even knows our names. Mm -hmm. And uh, Deep Throat tries to tell him, you're the killer, I'm the liar. Which was a great delivery, by the way. Those two having that moment. They're great. Yeah, it's a great scene. It's really cool to um, see those two, always great to see those two actors interacting together. And the fact that Especially since Deep Throat got, you know. True. Iced. iced. I like the fact that TSM uh, relies on a coin. To see who was going to go in and do the dirty deed of shooting. Well, he didn't want to be. The, he didn't want to be a destroyer. He was trying to be. He didn't want to kill anymore. He was trying to be a creator. True, but that's a really big gamble for someone who doesn't want to be a destroyer. Like, yeah, but he's, tra- he's trying to get out of it. On like Lady Luck here. Yeah, take a chance. But um, Risky, the uh, you know it's it's also I also noticed that uh, you know he wants to be a creator in another way too that isn't that is very subtle because at this point in the show we didn't know that mm-hmm. CSM was Mulder's biological father so he's got when in the very beginning when we find Chris Owens's version of the young CGB mm-hmm. and he's uh, you know shares the bunk with. Uh, young Mr. Mulder, Elder Mulder, William Mulder, and Mulder shows shows in the picture of young baby, baby Fox, Fox, baby Fox, and Mrs. Mulder, and says, "My one year old, blah blah blah." And you know, uh, Jeffrey Spender or CGB Spender, he the young the young version, he takes that picture and he keeps it, and that's that's I mean that's his kid, but he doesn't like he was not the creator, he doesn't get the credit mm-hmm. for it. So like that's you know one thing too where he was like trying to be a creator and he and uh and and he writes himself as the hero of his story he writes those the jack colquitt stories and even there he doesn't get full credit like his stories change at the very end he's not a creator he's so, a destroyer like, so poor guy can't catch a break that's <laughs> doesn't he's badass out. man csm oh god he, so it's, he's kind of a sad it's kind of a sad version of this character a little bit a lot of the time but he you know he says uh in on that christmas eve when he's typing the second chance Jack Colquitt story, he says, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I make sacrifices. He was okay because he made sacrifices. And that's how he sees it. He, you know, he sacrificed, um, you know, creature comforts or whatever you want to, whatever he would call them for what he thinks is, was the right thing to do, mm-hmm. which was to make decisions like these for the project, for I mean, I, he never. I don't think he ever really did it for the country, although the young version of him does seem to be much more earnest, anyway. Seemingly, the young version. Yeah, the old one. No, <laughs> he's so cynical. Like that's what I noticed so I much. Love is how that, cynical he is. Well, that's what I noticed so much is that when he's the young guy, when he's hanging out with Mulder, just reading his book or whatever, and then he goes to meet with the general, and they're all like smoking away, and he doesn't smoke yet, and mm-hmm. he's like, "No, I don't touch him." You know, they're their death and you just see these old cynical bur- guys like you know just smoking away and it's and it's like that is death right there is like this the room of room of death and he goes in and then he becomes you know the same thing i keep doing this this is like the <laughs> symbol for <laughs> evil your smoker that's your CSM symbol. it's like evil smoking evil smoking yeah <laughs> Sin- sinister smoking i was so nice though <laughs> But you're right, cynical. All right, got it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and big kudos to William B. Davis because I think that there's a fine line between, you know, some of the stuff could be maybe a little farcical in it, but he really plays it um, very real and very, uh, um, he is the hero of his story. You believe yeah. that he he is uh, at, maybe not in earnest, but definitely in earnest about some parts of himself, like wanting to be a writer. And if he could have just be a writer, if somebody would just not mess up his story and he would get paid to write, he was, he was ready to Can't resign. He, break, had, dude. he had drafted a letter of resignation. And he, he was, was so prepared happy to walk away from that life. Ah, Someday, man. We believe in you. But alas. All right, well, that is the, the truth as we see it for 
musings of a cigarette smoking man. CSM. There are lots more uh, dark corners to illuminate with a flashlight beam in that one. That's a rich episode for sure. The Morgan and the Wong episodes, and especially directed by, oof, there's a lot. So we'll probably come back to that one. But uh, it's still a lot of fun to rewatch and a lot of cool stuff in it. I love the rewatch. <laughs> Fourth season's very exciting. The writers are kicking it into high gear at this point. And so we'll be very soon. Yes. So stay with us. Uh, I'm your host, Katie. You can find me at KMoles on all social medias. And I'm your co-host, Crisalia. You can find me at Crisalia on all social medias. And we're coming at you from HollywoodRedux.com. Guys, please check out hashtag HRVR with the guys over at Infinite Grenade Launcher, IGL, as you guys know them. Yeah, it's our video game podcast. They're doing Virtual Reality Month this month, all VR, all month. And if you like the X-Files, then you better pay attention to VR because, as you know from the show, it's a, it's a way for, you know, uh, the aliens to come through slash our evil overlords. Uh, so you're going to want to just pay attention to that, um, f- you know. Uh, but hashtag HRVR if you uh, have any cool VR material that you'd like us to share or feature on our shows then you gotta use the hashtag uh, tweet at us and uh, be sure to subscribe to our Facebook and uh, our YouTube comment below comment like below us, like us share check out the video next door to this one click away have some fun and uh, we'll see you next week with a new episode the see truth is already here thank you <laughs>